Once upon a time, there was this YouTuber going by the name Keita Freak. Somebody said do a scary vid. And he said he got him on me. I say don't go to sleep. Or I will be in your dream. Y'all boys know, bro. If y'all know, hold on, hold on. Y'all boys know, man. If y'all don't know, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Key, he gets down and dirty with these scary reactions. Y'all don't know that, bro. I gets down and dirty with these scary reactions, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't know. Hey, I was the first one to do the scary reactions at night. You know what I'm saying? I'm the first one to do the scary reactions at night. You know what I'm saying? So, with the lights off. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh... If there's any conversation to that, you know what I'm saying? We back with the scary vids, man. We gonna keep the lights off, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the dark with y'all niggas. We gonna get it going. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do got my green screen behind me flowing. But, you know, you can't see it. You can't see it. You know what I'm saying? But it's back there. You know what I'm saying? As long as y'all can see me, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But how y'all like that intro, man? I'm bringing back the OG intros. I'm bringing back the scary vid moves. I'm bringing back everything. I'm setting the tone. But right now... We got three disturbing true Home Alone horror stories, man. And I ain't gonna lie. I'm excited to bring back scary vids, bro. I know y'all like scary vids. I can really drop a scary vid every... I remember when I was dropping them every day. If y'all want a scary vid every day, bro, just send them my way. And I'm gonna drop them every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna try to do them. You know what I'm saying? So, we're gonna get it out of the way, bro, if I can. But first thing first, make sure y'all boys hit that like button. If y'all excited for these to be back. And I want to know, did I honestly get y'all in the intro? Like, was y'all actually scared, though? Like, did I really, like, you know what I'm saying? Did you feel it in the inside just tingling, bro? Like, oh, shit. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know what I'm saying? I really do be going. I'm, I'm creative as fuck. I'm the creative as fuck. And we going to keep this, you know what I'm saying, creativity going, bro. Who you know doing scary vids in the dark, bro? With a light on their face. Damn, my nigga, it's just like I got possessed, bro. What the fuck? Oh, damn. Hush, little kicky, I'm still These scary reactions gonna leave them hurt. If I got possessed, then what's gonna work? If you don't hit that like, you gonna be on a shirt. <laughs> Let's get into this match. Alone watching his dog that inspired me to do another Home Alone themed video. Oh, I good. spent so much time reading stories of people's horrific experiences that I forget these things could happen to me too. In a bit of a I ain't gonna lie though, sound all the way up, bro. These headphones, I, I don't know, but he bitches get loud though. Yeah. The video. So the more positive experience, I would also. I'm gonna try not to get scared, my dad damn self. With Scentbird. If I, if I jump and get scared, though, don't say nothing, motherfucker. Keep watching the video. A fragrant subscription service that allows you to yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Good sponsor though, good sponsor. Said I missed a nightmare though. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't with no sponsor. Start the story, man. Growing up, I was raised in rural Michigan. There was hardly anything to do. If you like staring at trees and crops and lots of alone time, that was the place to be. I got out of there as soon as I got a car and enough money to move. I'm not a nature hater or anything, but I'd pick being by a big city any day. My parents don't own that property anymore. They sold it five years ago, but to describe it, it was a three-acre property. The house itself was pretty big, and there was a storage building out back. I'm not fucking with no house there. Hey, when this happens, tell me, I'm not fucking with uh, uh, y'all, uh, bro. It's been abandoned for years, bro. Stop, stop, stop going to abandoned houses, man. Home, and you went in that bitch alone too, bro. You just said y'all ain't had a place for a little, how long, bro? My parents would leave oh, me alone time. often at this age. They trusted me because I matured at a young age and I had responsibilities on the property. It was a weekend. And I was playing Vice City on my PS2 in the living room. When I had a PS2. What's no about PS2, boy? Came from outside somewhere in the yard. I right away ran to every window I could to look outside to see if I could see something, and I didn't see anything until I got to the window looking out to the storage building out back. The door to it was completely open. I went immediately to grab the rifle from the closet and go outside. I made my presence known, shouting, "Who's in there?" To no avail. I mean, one thing y'all got to learn, bro, somebody or a truly or anybody, bro, you know what I'm saying, or somebody like, you know what I'm saying, and y'all shit, and they know they don't supposed to be in there, 
Bro, stop saying who's there, bro. Y'all letting them know how far you is, bro, and where you at. Stop saying who's there, bro. They not going to answer you. You'll be better off saying Marco. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You'll be better off saying Marco. You know what I'm saying? Or just don't say nothing at all. If you know about that Marco, you know. You know what I'm saying? When I got to the door, I Stop. had known I had a gun before looking inside. There was a bunch of stuff in there. From the sit-down mower to the quad to infinite little lawn care items. I ain't gonna lie, I do gotta get in. Bro, I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna fall, keep pausing it, bro. But I gotta reach this appointment Saturday, next Saturday. And like, bro, I'm trying to throw this beard out, but bro, Lord knows I don't like it, man. You know what I'm saying? For all my ladies watching me, trust me, bro. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a hobo, man. I'm sorry. Any of that stuff. Even as a kid, I didn't scare easily. I'm not hobo! At that moment. I got really unsettled, and so I closed the door to the building and went back inside the house. I locked the door and then nah, sat I went, I went, never went in there. Time, watching the storage building, expecting the door to open at any second. That door was heavy and impossible to just open by itself. It was simply a fact that someone came and opened it. Whether they were still inside of the building, I wasn't sure. I decided to go call my dad and ask his opinion. I went to the kitchen to the landline phone and called my dad's cell phone. He didn't pick up, so I left a voicemail. Hey, um, hey, hey, dad, dad, man. Still hey, dad. Someone a voicemail because texting wasn't mainstream. After that, I went back to sitting next to the window, but now I put on a TV show in the background to make this less monotonous. Well, probably was calling out a phone with me. I was probably about to give up when I heard creaks from upstairs. My heart was now in my throat. I had to ask myself the big question: <laughs> Was I working myself up, or was someone here? I had a serious guard dog mentality. Even if I didn't love that place, I saw it as mine, my family's. I had to protect it. But I was in over my head. I grabbed the rifle again and walked upstairs. I didn't say anything. Calling out would only make a potential intruder know that I heard them. Exactly, bro. I made it to the top I'm of the saying, bro, don't call out, bro. For real, for real, bro. I'll just aside. Stop, stop doing that, bro. Y'all just y'all letting that intruder know where you at, gang. You, you like, bro, it's supposed to be your career. You supposed to have that advantage. Like I said, I know everything, bro. I know the six. I know I know what step make the noise and everything, bro. Nigga, come here you want to, bro. Tell you. Stairs, and I turned on the light for the upstairs hallway. There were five doors to open, all of them closed. Four led to bedrooms. Every One room make a bedroom. different sound before you get in it, too. Each door had a decently large crack underneath that would allow you to see under. Well, you get to it. The creak in the ceiling I heard moments earlier came from the side of the house my parents' bedroom was on. So I got down on my knees and looked under the crack of the door, and I saw two bare feet facing the other side of the door. I felt my ah! twist into a knot. The reality of the situation just became so much more real, and I realized I wasn't ready to threaten or, God forbid, shoot someone. I got up and quickly went downstairs, and I hid in the bathroom to call my dad. He still didn't pick up. I left another voicemail, and then I called again and again. He never picked up. He oh man, dad, you hell man, you hell man, dad, you hell man. I called 911, as I should have done right away, and I whispered into the phone the whole time, detailing exactly what was taking place. I was told to sit tight in the bathroom and not say a word. I heard footsteps coming down the stairs. And then they approached the bathroom door as if whoever it was somehow knew I went straight to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I just love like like scaring you niggas, man. It's, it's funny, bro. It's really it's really funny. You know what I'm saying? I don't get scared like that, bro. Y'all ever seen me jump in a reaction? Come on now, y'all ain't never seen me jump in a reaction, bro. I don't care what y'all talking about. Even if I jumped, it wasn't because of the video. I just jumped. I don't know why I jumped, bro. Inside the door. There was a brief pause <laughs> before a deep voice said, What's up, kid? The I fuck? I still remember the voice and those words so vividly. If I heard hey, you mean, what's up, kid? I didn't recognize it immediately. I almost wanted to cry. That's how scared I was. I disobeyed what the operator told me, and I spoke. I said loud and clear, I'm on the phone with the cops right now, and I have a gun. I put the operator on speaker. <laughs> Mo, I'm so off off keep pausing it, my nigga. But I know damn well this 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 man. I mean, you a little kid, but little kid. I know you ain't say you on the phone with twelve and you got a gun, bro. There's no way you got a gun if you on the phone with twelve, <laughs> bro. Who in the hell has a gun? You know what I'm saying? The mystery. We gonna call it a mystery mouse tool. 
who got a mystery box and tool in calling 12? Oh, I'm putting that mystery mask on too. That work. <laughs> yeah, man. Now, I ain't gonna lie. If I'm an intruder and I heard somebody say, I got, a, I, got a, I got a gun and I'm on the phone with 12. Man, you ain't got no gun. You just let me know you called 12. As she was asking me if everything's okay, the man attempted to open the door. And when he realized it was locked, I heard him walk away. I heard the footsteps fade to silence and then the sound of a door slamming. It was the sound of the back door. I'm sure I breathed a sigh of relief, and from there on, I waited for the police to arrive. When they did, I felt like a man just lifted off my shoulders. Your daddy, your dad, bro. I'm gonna keep it above. house inside and out, confirming that the man was gone. They asked if there was anywhere else I could stay that night, and I said yes, my uncle's house. We contacted my uncle, who your dad tripping. the police. Then he took me back to his place. The thing that haunts me the most is that it was my fault. I could have prevented this. I left the door unlocked as I went to the storage building to investigate. Clearly, that's when the man simply walked right into the house. Even with a rifle in my hands, I didn't feel safe at all. So you did have a scrap. The most horrific experience of my life. So, buddy, you had a scrap. And you like? What you scared for though? Like for anything, the intruder should be scared. W first story though. W first story. Let's keep it going. Let's I keep it going. My parents went away on a week-long anniversary trip. My sister had already moved out by this point, so I had to hold the fort. My parents' property is enclosed by woods and a dirt driveway leading to the road. The road is a quiet back road with equally sized properties running alongside it. All of them separated a decent distance, so it's a really isolated feel up there. Everyone in town knows each other. You see familiar faces Five all shit. the time for the most Five part. Type shit, type shit, type shit. gas station, at the grocery store, at the bars, which I learned a few years later. I ain't gonna lie, roads like this, it's just like, I never, I can't, bro. Like, why would I be on a road like this, bro? If I feel like a lion or anything will come out in the woods, man. Like, it's just, I wouldn't be on a road like that, man. It's just that road, it's just something not sitting right with me with that road, man. I ain't gonna lie, bro. It's not sitting right. Like, roads like this, bro, pathways and everything, bro, it's just... I can't do it, man. I can't. Started going to them. Speaking of gas stations, this story starts one day while my parents were away. I was at a gas station filling up my tank when a black Jeep Cherokee pulled up to the pump next to mine. My dad gave my paper. My goatee stepped out, greeted me, and started filling his tank. In that town, it was normal for strangers to greet each other like that. That ain't motherfucking normal. That's a that's a but creepers. And he walked around to my side of the pump and went, "Excuse me, do you know how to get to the interstate from here?" I helped him to the best of I my I would have been like, "Nigga, excuse me, get the fuck out my face." He pulled out a notepad no and cow. started writing down the directions I gave him. Very odd how he wouldn't just do that on his cell phone like anyone else would. He thanked me and asked if I'm from the area. I said, "Yeah, I grew up here." And he said he's from out of town. He didn't specify where. He then went back to his side and put the nozzle back in the pump. I ain't gonna lie, you should have known he, he was one of them. Name, as he said, it's nice meeting you. I said my name's Kate. He said what a lovely name. And then got in his car as I got into mine. I drove out. Oh, bro, my flashlight like going out, bro. Back home. It was only a few minutes worth of driving before I was approaching our turn into the L driveway. L flashlight, man. Slowed down. I'm not gonna lie. It's all good, though. Right we got another one. Me. We got another one. That moment that I noticed the car behind me was that same black Jeep. Damn, man, my flashlight, bro. My flashlight. I turned into our drive. Now the motherfucker want to be on bright as fuck, my nigga. L.A. Payday, L.A. Payday. Fuck this flashlight, man. He went the complete opposite way that I told him to go to get to the interstate. As he passed me, he didn't slow down or anything, so it seemed that maybe he just forgot the directions I gave him and went the wrong way. I let myself inside and went about the rest of my day doing whatever. I think it was that night that I was going out to meet up with my friends that I stepped outside and walked to my car and heard the sound of footsteps nearby. Like I said, the house is enclosed by woods and this was in the middle of the summertime. It could have been any number of animals. So I didn't investigate. I just got in my car and left. But when I got back home hours later and walked Not out in the ha <laughs> a man's voice from out somewhere in the woods called out Kate. I got the chills as I looked around. And then you know it's him because he said your name, bro. He said the name that you told him, bro. So you know it's him. It ain't no, this ain't no play play. In a panic, rushed to open the front door. I slammed it shut and sat on the couch to breathe. The neighbors all knew my name, but the houses are not on top of each other. So it's a bit of a walk. 
and there was no reason for one of them to call my name like that like a creep and not identify themselves. I decided to call my parents to tell them, and their I ain't gonna lie, we, we know what it is. One of the Let me make sure my mic, bro. We'll probably knock on the door. You know what I'm saying? Some, my mic be tripping sometimes, but I gotta make sure my mic working, though. The next day, which was a Saturday, I stayed right, home working. most of the day, and later that night, I once again was going out to meet my, my mic ain't went out on me in a minute. I don't want to jinx it, but like it be tripping day. sometimes. I though. went outside. Ain't gonna lie. I was walking to my car. I heard loud and clear from the not so far distance. Someone called Kate again. This time I didn't wait a second. I ran back inside the house and locked the door again. I called 911 this time, texting my family while doing so. After two cops showed up to the house, they looked around the perimeter of the property with their flashlights. Then came back and said to call again if this persisted. I'm not gonna lie, bro. It's low key. Much better after this, it's not really like they did much. Like, bro, that's what I'm saying. Low key, like, bro, low key. Calling twelve, it does nothing for you in a situation like this, bro. Cause what, they, what can they do, bro? If you don't see nobody, if you don't know nothing, man. I'm not gonna lie, bro. It's just, it's really pointless, bro. At this point, bro, just go in self defense mode. I'm telling you, bro. I refrained from going outside until the next day when I had work. You gotta put better the ass, bro. At a nearby restaurant. I was working a late shift. I left the house in broad daylight, paranoid to hear that voice again. Thankfully, though, I didn't. Maybe seeing the police car finally scared them off. After many hours at work, I was ready to go home and collapse into bed. I pulled onto the property, parked my car out front, and walked to the front door. I stopped when I heard the sound of footsteps again. It didn't sound like an animal. Shit, sound footsteps, real as hell in my ear, gang. Shit, loud, bro. I on the front deck for a second, waiting. Then, that familiar voice yelled out again, saying, Kate, don't call the cops on me again, cutie. I yelled out, you need help, you're sick, and let myself inside. I called the cops once more. My nigga. The fuck you mean, cutie, my nigga? What the, what the f- uh -huh. Why we gotta get a- Why do we gotta be a pedo store? Oh, oh, oh! It ain't really a pedo, good life. But it grown to hell, but like, oh my god. The cops came again, searched the perimeter again, and left. My parents told me I should stay at a friend's house for the night. They got a chill, what the more. fuck? They would be back the following night. So what could you get cold for? I feel much safer being there. My friend Alex told me I could stay with her that night. So I packed a bag and was ready to go. No, it's something wrong when it's cold in it, man. The it don't ever be cold in here. Sure the coast was clear. I then went outside and locked the door as fast as I could, then what? ran to the car. As I turned the key in the ignition, I heard something right to my left. Right outside the driver's side door was a man wearing a face mask trying to open the door. Shit, get the fuck out of there. Get the fuck out. Felt like I was choking on The fuck air. out. As I put the car in drive, he started hitting the glass with his elbow. Oh, hell no. I moved my car around on the grass and sped down the driveway, and I turned right up the road Just and didn't his stop bitch hitting his got fucking coat at elbow. You sick. I was hysterically crying the whole drive there as I had Alex and her dad on the phone with me. He said he would have come and picked me up had he known the situation. We called the police together for a third time in total. A couple officers went to my parents' house to investigate again, make sure no windows were shattered or anything. One officer came to Alex's house where I once again gave my description of what happened. This was probably the most action these cops had seen in a long time in this quiet town. Thankfully, my parents came home the next day. Some of them out of town niggas, man. Again. I fully really, believe the man at the gas station followed me home intentionally and scoped the place out, realizing I was by myself. If somebody come introduce themselves to you and they say they from out of town, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Best bet, bro, just to go on about your business, bro. Out of towners, bro. When they like, like they coming up to you and I'm out of, I'm from out of town. Like, bro, I'll be weird, man. And for whatever reason, toyed with me until he actually tried to pounce and get me. I shouldn't have given my real name. And I should have been more alert to my surroundings and realized he was following me in my car that day. Some people are nuts and have way too much time on their hands. This incident was a huge motivating factor in my moving out to my own apartment a few months later. I'm telling you, my name John. Call me John. I got John. I was home alone one night for a reason I don't remember. All I remember is my story two is smooth. Which story y'all had better? Story one or story two? Story one. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. Story one was like more scarier because no, nah, I ain't gonna lie. Story two got it, man. Story two got it. I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty, bro. And then elbowing your, your window and everything like that's that's od. Story two got it. Story one. 
Or you had a rifle. You just scary. I'm not gonna lie. I was 15 or 16 years. You old. had a mystery mouse console. You just, you just, you know, what I was I'm obsessed with StarCraft, and admittedly, I'd sometimes spend a weekend night or two. I thought they had Call of Duty on there, man. PC game. This was right before COVID lockdowns. I ain't gonna lie though. That's how my PC look though. My PC look just like this, except for like my shit like blue. My shit changed colors though. My shit like blue and green and shit like that. I was playing StarCraft on my computer in my bedroom on the first floor. That's when the doorbell rang twice. I hurried to the door, not wanting to be away from the game for too long in fear of losing. I got to the front door and said, who is it, as I always would if I was alone. A soft and weak voice on the other side said something that I couldn't hear. It sounded like a woman. Yeah, hey, this is my last time pausing it, so we ain't gonna pause it no more, but y'all let me know if y'all like, 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 in a dark key better. Y'all like in a dark key, bro, just let me know, bro. I feel like I'm more attuned with y'all when I'm in a dark. I mean, I can cut on my light, but, like, y'all will see me better. But, like, it's just, like, y'all can still see me, right? You know what I'm saying? But I just feel like this is more better. Like, it's more personal. Like, I feel this shit with y'all niggas, man. It's way more scary. Open the door with the storm door still separating me and this older woman standing on the other side with a big smile on her face. She had her hands... And y'all going to school tomorrow, too? Y'all better go to so bed. The door. Can I help you? I know most of y'all going to school. Except for, like, you know what I'm saying? You, and Cairo, you ain't going inside. to school in the next month. Ever since I was a little kid, I was always taught not to let a stranger into the house, ever. That included women. I felt so awkward, though. I didn't know how to turn her away. I redirected her to the library a few blocks down, because they'd surely have a phone. Deep down, I knew the library was... Hey, there ain't nobody coming to my house with no phone, trying bro. To get the stranger I ain't gonna lie to you. trying to get into my house to leave. I'm not doing that right now. She was still smiling, but what she said next did not match her smile. She said, that's very rude to turn away an old lady asking for help. I replied, Man, only hey, I, I know I said I going to pop, but one thing about me, bro, I don't like old ladies, bro. Like, bro, old ladies creepy as hell, bro. I told y'all, ever since I seen the visit, bro, it's just like old ladies, bro. I, I, I don't like old ladies, man. I cannot be alone with no old lady, bro. I'm going to be scared as hell, bro. Like, some about old ladies, I'm telling y'all, they just rub me the wrong way. Like, old, old ass ladies, bro, and they just creepy, bro. Like, you never know with them, bro. They creepy as hell, bro. I'm telling you, the visit scarred me. It scarred me. It scarred me. Only way I could think to, and that was that my parents don't allow strangers into the house. It's a house rule. I slowly started closing the door as I was saying sorry. And she just stood there, not moving, but still smiling at me. And though her telling y'all, bro. Something about them, bro. Something about them. More menacing. I was walking back to my room when the doorbell rang again. Motherfuckers be bots. There was no way in hell. I was they be, they be the TikTok AIs. Yes. That woman radiated weird vibes from the start. Maybe something was wrong with her. Maybe she wasn't all there. These were things I had no way of knowing. And maybe that was selfish of me to send her on her way. But I just wasn't opening the door for anyone when I was home alone. I went back to my game. Not too long after I sat back down, I heard something tapping on the window. It was a sure. type sound from something metal. They got the a window in it, man. <laughs> got a window in it, man. Down, so I couldn't see what was making the noise, but I already had an idea. My room was the only room with a light on in the house. The horrible thought that it was the old woman from just before, and that she walked over to my window, terrifying oh, me. Oh, I'm seeing shit, huh? I think I'm seeing that shit, it was bro. the old woman from just before. Yeah, I'm seeing shit. I'm a little pair in the car now, kid. Come down. Me. I turned Cut off the sound on my computer. At this point, I didn't care about my game anymore. The clinking sound on the window persisted. I basically said F this and up and left to a different room in the house. I sat in the darkness of the living room for a bit when the doorbell rang again. This woman was harassing me now. I tried to convince myself she wasn't a threat, just some crazy old woman who's probably clueless but as she, to where she, she is. She's a threat. She's a definitely she a threat. The doorbell a second and third time. I decided to go open the door and ask her if there's someone I could call for her. But when I opened the door, there was now a man on the other side. Oh, hell no. Nah. About 10 years younger than her. Hell no. Nah. He said through the storm door, have you seen my mother? I replied saying yes, she came to my door just before. He then apologized to me and said she has dementia and got out of the house. Oh, nah, hell no. Nah. Both, both of you motherfuckers weird. I ain't gonna lie. This shit, I ain't gonna lie. This story right here, though. I ain't gonna lie. There's something about this story right here that just... I'm liking this. I'm liking this story. I suddenly felt this bad, it. But he asked me if he could come in for a minute. And again, I felt awkward. Why did he need to come inside? I said the same thing that I told to the woman who we claimed to be his mother. I said we could just talk through this door. 
I then said that I think she went into my backyard because I heard something at my window. I told him he could go around back and check. You talking too much, bro. He that nigga a weirdo, too. He a weirdo, too. And I thought he went into the backyard. But when I went to the back and looked out the back window, expecting to see him searching around, I saw nobody. Not him or his mom. This was all too weird for me. I went to bed on the earlier side that night, just falling asleep with the TV on in the background. I wouldn't be able to sleep. You different. You different for me. I told you. I, I, I wouldn't be able to go to sleep, bro. I remembered the concerned man, and I decided to try and help. I went to the window, lifted the blind up with my hand. Oh, you, 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 you dumb! You dumb! Why would you go to the window and lift it up? Bro, somebody else on my window. I swear, I swear to God, bro, I'm not lifting up no window, my nigga. You're dumb. You're a fucking dumb. I saw that woman outside my window with that same creepy smile. She was tapping a kitchen knife on my window. Did she has a knife? I closed the blind ah. and crawled back into my bed. The fuck? I didn't feel like it was actually happening. A suspiciously short amount of time later, the doorbell rang like four times. The clinking on the window stopped by this point. This was all too suspicious. Nigga, I got that chills in this bitch. I ignored the doorbell. I stayed in my bed. I was gonna wait this out. I didn't have a cell phone at this time. I wasn't the most social guy growing up. I also didn't want to call the police for some reason. I waited this all out until it finally stopped. The next morning, I told my dad what happened when I called him. He told me I was smart not to open the door. Everyone agreed that everything about it sounded like an attempted robbery. Is there a chance that maybe that woman really did have dementia and that the man was really her concerned son? Nah, bro. Maybe, nope, 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 nope. He was in on it. He want to come into the house too. Facts. How did he even know she came to my house specifically? Facts. Why didn't he ever go into the backyard? Now that second question though, that, that second question, that is the, that, 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 that solves it right there. Why did he, how he know he came to your house? That's facts. For her when I gave him permission to do so. Too many unanswered questions that lead me to believe I avoided something terrible happening if I opened that door. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, a week ago as I'm recording this, something happened to me personally that inspired me to revisit this theme. So my friend Cody asked me to watch his dog Theo for the night. Theo's a little pomsky and he barks a lot, so when he started barking like crazy at something going on outside, I didn't pay any attention to it besides telling him to be quiet a few times. Shit. But when he went to the back door and kept barking, I figured he wanted to go outside. So I was going to the back door to open it, but as I got close to the door, I realized someone was trying to open the door from the outside. And then I saw through the screen of the door, there was another guy looking right back at me. Man, this was in the no. backyard, which was already alarming enough. And he wasn't someone I recognized to be a family member of Cody's. I would have thought they hired a fire, I mean, uh, uh, assassin to come get me or something, bro. Like, no cap, man. That's how I be thinking, bro. I tell you, I'm instantly defense mode, man. So I asked him who he is. And he responded asking me if I'd seen Melissa. Melissa is Cody's younger sister who's in her 20s. Meanwhile, this guy looked like he was in his mid-50s and homeless. So I told him he needs to leave. There's no Melissa who lives here. And he said, you sure? So I said, yeah, you need to leave. There's cameras all over the property. He left right after that. Getting him to leave was easy, but when Cody asked his sister who that guy could have been, she said she had no idea. The guy looked like he was 55, drunk, and filthy. Hey, Not no. exactly someone Cody's 20-something-year-old sister would be associating with. The fact that he went to the back door and tried letting himself in was actually pretty terrifying because weird, you could only bro. imagine what he was trying to do to Melissa. And it's why so many of these stories could be avoided by just keeping your doors locked. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, that's, that's weird right there, bro. My advice to you motherfuckers is start locking your doors, man. Y'all tripping, bro. I ain't gonna lie, how the hell don't you lock your door, bro? That's like, man, I ain't gonna lie. Something about, something about not locking the door is just crazy to me. But I love y'all, man. I appreciate y'all love and support. It's your boy, Keep the Freak. Y'all know nobody do these scares like me. I love y'all, man. I'm out, though. If y'all like this video, y'all run this up. Y'all run these likes up. You know what I'm saying? I say give me 15 likes on this video. I will drop another one. You know what I'm saying? So even if y'all get close, I'll drop it. You know what I'm saying? But if I get 15, don't stop on 15. Just keep liking the video. And I love y'all, man. You know what I'm saying?